share with you just a few thoughts. I, I did share this um, a week ago at the um, business meeting, but a lot of you were not at the business meeting, and it's one of my favourite passages of scripture, and that's the book of Psalms. It's a very big book, got 150 Psalms in it, and what I want to have a brief look at is the very first Psalm because this sort of sets up the whole book and a lot of the themes that we read about in the rest of the psalms are introduced in the very first psalm. It's not a long one, so don't worry. Some of them are very, very long, um, but this is a nice short one. And um, what it does is it compares We've been talking about making decisions today and which paths you're going to go down. And it talks about the, um, the way of the righteous or the path of the righteous and the path of the wicked. And it compares them. And so it goes, I'll, I'll read through it all and then I'll go back and just maybe highlight a few, a few parts of it. But it starts like this, Blessed is the man, or we could say woman, um, who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. And it describes what this person is like. He or they are like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. So, yeah, picture those things. Then it gives us a picture of the wicked. It says, the wicked are not so, but they are like the chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now it's a little psalm, but I tell you what, there's a lot of big ideas in that psalm. And it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's worth a, a full sermon. You could probably preach a couple of sermons on this. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that. Let's go to verse number one. What's the very first word? Blessed. Blessed. What does that make you think of? Where else do we read the word Blessed. Thank you. You great minds think alike. That's what I was thinking too. Blessed. That they were the words that Jesus started with, wasn't it? In his sermon on the mount. Blessed are those who and Jesus mentioned a number of things. Can you remember any of them? Blessed are who? It's a funny one, isn't it? Why why would the why would those who mourn be blessed? But it's talking about spiritually but Blessed are those who mourn. I think it goes, for they shall be what? Comforted. That's a blessing. What other Beatitudes or blessings did Jesus talk about? Right. So um, peacemakers are a blessing, aren't they? What's the opposite of a peacemaker? A troublemaker. Who likes to be around troublemakers? They are bad news, aren't they? Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Um, what are some other blessed that he said? Blessed are the meek, for they will what? They're going to inherit the earth. Um, the opposite of meekness is what? Pride and arrogance. We were learning about that at our lesson this morning. Um, that's not good. I know another one we said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? They shall obtain mercy. And so um, Jesus had a lot of blessings. He, he even said, blessed are you 
when men revile you and say all sorts of things against you and persecute you, how could you be blessed if all that was happening? Because he goes on to say, because this is what they did to the prophets and the righteous people before you. In other words, you're in good company. You're not on your own. This is what they did to the prophets and all those people who spoke for God. So blessed is the man, it says here in the first psalm, who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Is there a blessed, is there a blessing in not following the way of the wicked? Who wants to follow the wicked? <laughs> is, is, Yeah. So, you know, the, the way of the wicked, um, it, as Michael said, it might appear okay in the beginning, but if you just observe what happens, the way of the wicked is not blessed. Sooner or later it catches up with them. So blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the way of the wicked. And But there's another one, nor stands in the way of sinners. So it's interesting, the way this is being put, it's actually going from one level to the next level and it's getting worse and worse and worse. So don't don't walk in, don't don't listen to the counsel of the wicked. That's not good advice. Don't stand in the way of sinners. That's getting worse. Because that's not going to end up with blessing. And then it says, don't sit in the seat of scoffers. Oh, that's the worst type of person you can get. People that scoff at God. And we don't want to we don't want to sit in that seat, the psalmist says. Because you're not going to be blessed. The opposite of blessing is what? Cursing. You know, so basically what he's saying here is cursed is the way of the wicked. And um Cursed are those who stand with sinners and cursed are those who scoff. And friends, hopefully we're, we're not a part of any one of those three groups. But then it goes to talk about the righteous. So the, the righteous person doesn't do those things. But his delight is what? It's in the law of the Lord. What does that mean? The law of the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And it goes on to say, and, and, and on his law he meditates day and night. So when it says the law, what's it referring to, do you think? Is it so it's certainly the commandments, but just the commandments? It's wider than the commandments. Yeah, in, in actually Hebrew, it, it's, it's, it's referring to the word Torah, which is the whole revealed will of God. In other words, the whole of the Bible. The word Torah means instruction, direction. And so God's, the whole of the Bible is like an instruction book to, um, to teach us the best way to go. And if we go that way, the Bible says we will be blessed. And um, when we come to God's word, don't just pick it up and read a verse and put it down. Like, you know, snap, bang, bang, that's it. It says here that the way of the righteous, their delight is in the law or the whole instruction of God and they meditate on it, how often? Day and night. So friends, this is a challenge. And... When we get into God's Word, um, I don't know about you, but it's interesting. And you do, you think about it all the time. Because sometimes you're trying to work out what it means, you think, man, man, what does that mean? And so you're thinking about it, praying about it, but that's what God wants. Sometimes we have to dig and scratch a bit in the Word. We don't always understand. We were asking questions today, that's good. 
because God's got us thinking and he wants to get us thinking and, and his word goes deep and it's just like searching for treasure you know precious metals gold, silver precious stones, diamonds all that, do you, do you just find them lying on the surface? rarely you have to dig for those things. You have to work hard. So let's be willing to put some work in. Let's be doing to think a bit. The righteous man is willing to meditate on God's word day and night. Sort of digging to get to the, the deeper truth. Now when, when you do this, what, 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 what are you likened to? The person that does this, it says they are like a what? Tree. What do you think of when you look at a tree? I'm looking at a tree through there. Big, strong. It's got roots that go down into the ground. Um, it's solid. So the psalmist says here, people that delight in God's word, that think about it, meditate upon it, they're like a tree. They're strong. They're solid. Their roots go down. They're not going to get blown over easy. They are like a tree planted by the streams of water. Can you picture that scene? Trees that are near a river. Um, I think in this country we've got the red river gums, great big trees that grow near the river. Why do they grow so big and strong? Because they've got the water. They can drink it up. You go to bush, you go to country, and there's a lot of it in our country, where there's hardly any water. How big are the trees? They're small, they're, they're sort of scungy and little and mean because there's not much to make them grow. You go to country that's well watered, and you'll see beautiful, big, what was the soil's okay? Beautiful, big trees. And, um, and they've got a lot of leaves and they bear fruit. So they're not only good to look at, they can be good to eat. You know, they bear fruit. Uh, they bear fruit in this season. And it says, and their leaf does not wither. If you've got a plant or a tree and it lacks water, what happens to it? What happens to its leaves? They start to shrivel up and die, and maybe even drop off. But here it says, if you're planted by the water, if you, if you put your roots down deep into God's word, um, you, your, your leaves are it's always going to be green, you're always going to have fruit, you're not going to shrivel up and die. They're images of fruitfulness and bounty. Um, and it says, and their leaf does not wither, in all that they do, they prosper. Right, that's good to know, isn't it? In all that they do, they prosper. But then it says the wicked are not so. We get the complete contrast. The wicked are not so. Um, and what are the wicked likened to? Chaff. What's chaff? When you harvest wheat or grains, you've got the kernel, which is good. That's what we make the bread out of and all that. So that's all the goodness. It's all the nutrition. Um, but the husk is sort of like the outer part that you just, you don't eat that. You throw it away. And so in olden times when they were um, harvesting the wheat, they would pick it. And uh, in Bible times, you might see them with a winnowing fork, throwing it up in the air. Why did they do that? Sorry? Exactly. Because when you threw it up in the air, the chaff is really light. There's nothing to it. And if the wind's blowing, guess what it does to the chaff? It just blows it away. That way you don't have to separate it. So they just throw it up into the air, and the wind gets rid of all the chaff, and what comes down is what? the precious kernel, the grain out of which you make the bread um, or whatever you're making. So um, the wicked are like chaff. Those get blown away. It's, it's sort of saying it's useless. 
good for nothing. Whereas the righteous are like trees. So, um, yeah, the wicked are like the chaff that the wind just blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment. Now, the Bible says that we're all going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone on our own. That's where we're not going to... That's where we're not going to pay for the sins of our parents. That's where we're going to pay for whose sins. If we're going to pay for any sins, we're going to pay for our own sins at that point in time. But it says that the wicked are not going to be able to stand in the judgment. They're going to be found wanting. And, um, and that's not going to be good news. And it also says, nor are sinners going to be in the congregation of the righteous. Like, when it comes to that time, you want to be on the right side, yes? I want to be on the right side of the equation. I want to be on the right side of God. I don't want to be on the wrong side of God. I want to be on the right side of the judgment. I don't want to be on the wrong side of the judgment. And, and so sinners are not going to stand. They're going to be on the wrong side. But then it ends up with a wonderful promise. Verse 6, it says... For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Like, if we are, are, are trying to follow God, God is with us. He knows our way. I believe he protects our way. Um, he's with, he knows the way of the righteous. He's with us, protecting us, guiding us, going before us before us, going behind us, going with us. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will what? Perish. That's pretty scary. There is no future in the way of the wicked. And so this is just a really short little psalm with a really big message. Let's make sure we're on the path of the righteous and not on the path of the wicked. Let's put our roots into God's word and let's be like a, a strong tree that's watered and that bears fruit and that its fruit never fails. And when it does come to the judgment, we won't have to worry because we're going to be on the right side of the equation and God is going to be with us. So maybe we can take these few thoughts with us as we leave this Sabbath and head into another week. So we've got to... Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we, um, we thank you that we've had the opportunity to be with you today. We thank you that we can come here and, Lord, be with your people. And uh, so, Lord, it's a special time. It's a special place because we're gathered together, Lord, as your people, um, to worship you. And I, uh, I just pray a blessing, Lord, may your presence and your spirit go with each one of us as we head into this week that's ahead. Lord, may we um, uh, make sure that we're on the path of the righteous. Lord, help us to... Um, meditate and think on your word and may each one of us be like trees that are planted by the water and we ask and pray this Jesus in your name Amen, Amen.